Hey everyone, Pablo here. Welcome to this first development log of our new tool, GameDev Agent, that we're building at Zemba. GameDev Agent is a coding assistant for the Godot engine that's going to help you make games faster. If you have any questions, feedback, feature requests, criticisms, please put it all in the comments. The reason we're making this video is because we really want to see what you guys think. So let's go and have a look. I'm going to go to Godot. I've got a project here that's open. And GameDev Agent is installed as a Godot plugin. So I've got my add-ons folder and the plugin is enabled. As you can see here on the right, uh, this has added a new tab uh, where I can start a new chat and I can also view previous conversations and bookmark them and delete them, which are kind of basic things that you would expect from a tool like this. So what's special about this and why not use something like GitHub Copilot or continue.dev or cursor or one of the many other coding assistants? Well, the main reason is that this is integrated into the Godot engine and into your project. So when you start a new chat, I can ask something like, what's this project about? And it's already going to know a few basic things about your project. So it's going to have an idea of the scene structure of your current scene, all the nodes, as well as files and directories. So that's already a good starting point because you don't have to go and explain yourself every single time and tell it, you know, what is your project about. In addition to that, you can add extra context. Let's say I've got a few script files open. I've got these three files that are open. And let's say I want to learn about how we're using physics process here. So I can go and ask, how are we using physics process? And to add additional context, I can click add context and you can see a lot of things pop up. So you can add the scripts that are open and you can also add um, the output of the console. Let's say if there are error messages or warnings, you can, you can quote unquote chat to those error messages, learn what they're about. You can also force it to look up the documentation, in which case the AI will um, read the documentation. In the future, we plan to add also some other quality resources that it can pull from, such as some of our tutorials, uh, some of the top uh, contributor repositories, like some of the main plugins in the Godot ecosystem. Um, you can also ask it to look at your uh, notes, at your scene tree and the file tree, as well as the git diff. That means the changes you've made in your repository that haven't yet been added to a commit. So uh, let's go and try that out. And it should be able to explain um, wh what um, we are doing with this uh, method and where exactly that's taking place. So you can see that it has access to files uh, in this manner. And if we go and make a mistake, let's say I'm going to try to make a syntax mistake there. I can also go and um, put in the output and let's say uh, ask it why. And let's see what it says. And we can also pass the open files again so that it can uh, perhaps point us out where the error is taking place. And uh, you can see here that it's found the where the issue is, right? So I made a I, I made an error here in my code and purpose, and it's helped me figure out where the error was. GameDev Agent is not only about chatting, but it can actually execute actions. So let's say I want to create a new enemy and I want to have a script and a new scene. So create a new uh, enemy scene with a script um, for the enemy to move up and down. So something like that. And let's go and see what it says. It will always start by giving you the instructions on how to do it. But if we scroll down, it'll suggest that we create a new file for the enemy. And you can see these buttons. So you can actually go and create the scene with a root node of character body 3D. So I'm going to click that. And you can see that the scene has been created. And then you can also go and create the script. So it's got the script uh, ready as well. Obviously, this is AI code. There might be errors. Um, I could go and say, um, check with the docs that this is correct. And it's going to go and look up uh, the documentation to see uh, what it made, uh, uh, what mistakes it made. And I could have also passed on the output of the error. Um, so this is obviously AI. So there are going to be errors. You're always in control. You're the one that um, 
makes all the decisions. So this thing is only going to suggest uh, things that you can do, and then you can choose to approve those changes, apply them, or um, you can do something different. We can also see that this looked up the docs, so it's giving us some sources. So if you click on any of those links, then it's going to take you to the actual documentation, and you can obviously dive deeper on your own. Um, let's ask it to create a sub uh, child node because that's the last thing I want to show you. Uh, add a mesh and a collider child nodes to the enemy. So it has been given me instructions on how to add those children nodes, and um, it actually didn't give me the buttons to apply that. So then I told it, you do it, <laughs> and then it actually did give me the options. So let's try them out and we can see that it's added those two things. So again, this is a development log. This is still early days. We're working on improvements. Um, the way uh, that I see this working uh, is that I would like to be able to not only create nodes, but also modify them and set properties to them and set sub resources. So for instance, I'd like to be able to say, create a red sphere and it should be able to add the 3D node and give it the mesh and select the sphere mesh and then give, put it a collider and then perhaps create a material and select the color red. So that's where I wanted to, to get in a few weeks. Um, now, how does this work? How is this running? Well, there is the client, which is a Godot plugin, as, as you can see. Um, the server is uh, built in Node.js, so it is a Node plus Express web application. I've got this running locally. Uh, for database, I'm using MySQL. Currently, I'm just using it locally in a Docker container. And lastly, uh, for the actual LLM, I'm currently using DeepSeq version 3, but um, this is built in a way that we can easily swap LLMs and we're going to be testing different LLMs to find the most optimal one. But I'm super happy where this is at and I'd really love your feedback. What are things that you would like us to add? What kind of actions you would like to see here? What would save you the most amount of time? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.